Everyone in life science is aware of the biggest recent development in the history of gene editing, the groundbreaking discovery of CRISPR technology, for which Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier were awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. But did you know, the very first person to introduce the possibility of gene editing was a 28-year-old student named Francisco Mojica, who was doing his doctorate at the University of Alicante in Spain in 1992. Maika was sequencing the genome of a particular halophilic bacterium when he noticed some strange sequences. He then sequenced various other bacteria and found 20 species that also had an equivalent to the initial strange sequence. These sequences were found repeated multiple times along the genome, always being approximately 30 bases long and separated from each other by about 36 bases. The sections of 36 bases were strangely different from one another. Mahika called these unusual sequences spaces. He entered these spacer sequences onto every database he could find to identify them. But it wasn't until 2003 when he finally got a hit. The spacer sequence from a strain of E. coli matched with a sequence from a virus that infects E. coli. From his findings, he concluded that there was a correlation between the presence of a spacer in a bacterium with its resistance to infection by a virus which contained the same spacer. The spaces were somehow a part of an immune response that bacteria had developed against viruses to protect them from future attacks. For the following two years, each time Mahika tried to publish these findings, his paper was rejected. Eventually, in 2005, his findings were published in the Journal of Molecular Evolution. It took until 2007 before many in the scientific community began to recognize the importance of the bacterial immune response and its potential in gene editing. By this point, it was known that bacteria were able to copy parts of viral genes following an attack and insert these genes into their own genome as spacers. When attacked again by the same virus, bacteria simply copy their spacer sequences, which can then bind to the matching region on the viral genome, initiating the destruction of the viral DNA. Following this, scientists identified that spacers could be treated as swappable cassettes, enabling them to cut out or insert any matching DNA sequence they wanted. The number of research labs working on this system rapidly increased, each identifying new pieces to the puzzle. Watch part two to learn about some of the other key scientists that participated in the development of gene editing.